Hey guys, welcome to the video. Um, this is going to be video one of the SEO for e-commerce masterclass. Before we get started, if you could please hit the subscribe button below, I would greatly appreciate it. Please also like the video and watch till at least 50% through to help my channel grow. Um, that would be awesome. We really, would really appreciate that. So this video we're just going to be covering keyword research. So um, honestly, relatively simple concept. Uh, this is going to be video one of, I would say eight to 10. I'm not sure exactly how long I'm gonna make the the course yet, but this will be video one on keyword research. We will dive right in and I'll see you in a minute. Welcome to the video guys. So this is video one of eight to 10, I would say. Not sure exactly how long I'm gonna make the course yet, but this one's going to be on keyword research, which is step one in the SEO research process. So what our goal at this stage is we want to compile as many relevant keywords as possible to a particular product. So if you have a website with multiple product types on it, um, it's better to go very deep SEO wise and write a lot of content for one product than to have like a little bit of content for a whole bunch of different products. And um, we'll get more into that as we go, but we want to do this process per product type. So if you have 15 different products, we want to just pick one to do this process for. So for example, you could pick fire pit tables. Um, in this example here, I'm going to be doing mobility scooters um, just to show you. So again, um, if you have more than one, you can do them over time, you can do many, but for the more, the deeper you go, the more content, the more research you do on each product type, the better your results you're gonna see. Um, and it's almost like a 80, 90, 90. So 90% of your results are gonna come in the last 10% of the actual work. Like you have to put all the work in and then the results will be outsized. So don't like just do a little bit for each one and see very small results. For everything, it's better to put a whole bunch of time in one and actually get outsized returns over time. So how to do keyword research? Um, unfortunately, there's lots of free tools out there. Usually many are not very good. We wanna have a paid tool. So my favorite is Ahrefs. Unfortunately with Ahrefs, there is no free trial. Um, but that said, these other ones are also good options. Not This one's not relevant for right now. So SEMrush is a good option and another one called Uber Suggest is a good option. Um, and Moz is also a good option. So these three are all pretty good and they all have uh, free trials. So you could have like three months free just doing a trial each of those if money is a concern. Um, and Ahrefs is the one that's paid. There will not be a free trial, but if you are ever going to pay for one, that would be the one I recommend down the line. Um, you do likely need a free one or at least a free trial of a paid tool. Uh, the free ones themselves will not give you the information that you need to do this correctly. So how to do keyword research? Definitely need a good keyword tool. How to qualify a keyword? So there's two things we wanna look at. Um, will it be easy to rank for? So the answer to this question, most people just look for keyword difficulty, um, which can be a good preliminary assessment, but it's not exactly accurate and it's not exactly um, indicative of how easy it is to rank for a keyword. So what we do instead is we look on the search and results page. This looks like a lot of text, but just to explain it quickly. Every website on the internet, Google assigns a domain rating to. Domain rating is a scale of zero to 100, which it indicates how strong the website is. So if we, we're on Notion right now, we can see there's a domain rating of 91, which is very high, obviously. So in the e-commerce space, anything above 10 in your first year is actually pretty good. Anything above 30 in your first year is very good, and anything above 50 is like, you're probably doing 10 million a year, I would say. Amazon, Home Depot, Costco, all these websites are usually about a, over a 70. So many people, when they're looking to see how difficult the keyword is to rank for, they will look at the keyword difficulty score. So this isn't the keyword difficulty score. Just show you an example. If I type in the word sauna, this is the keyword difficulty score. So most people will assess this to see how difficult the keyword is, not what we're going to go into in a sec. This is what most people use, the keyword difficulty. The problem with that is what actually matters is we wanna look on the search engine results page. So if you type in the word sauna on Google, these tools actually have a way you can see. So SERP stands for search engine results page. And we can see on Google, here, Google, United States and the country, what websites show up on the top result. So we can see here, all of these websites on page one have extremely high domain ratings, 96, 90, 85. These ones are actually quite low, but they have literally sauna.com in the URL. That's a side tip. If you wanna rank for a keyword, if it's in your URL, it's a huge advantage. So this one, the keyword sauna, sauna.com is literally 26, while everything else is like 80, 96, 90. But this would indicate this is a very hard keyword to rank for because we're gonna have to overcome these websites to rank. 
So Costco, Home Depot, Wikipedia, very, very difficult, but it's possible, I guess, with the right domain and right content on your website. But this is what we want to look at. We want to look at the search engine results page for the keyword and see how many low domain rating websites are ranking for it, which is much more indicative than then this generic keyword difficulty number. To show you an example, Portable Sauna has a keyword difficult of three, which would indicate that it's very, very easy to rank for. If we go to the search and results page for this, we can see every website ranking is above like 70. There's 154, 84, 83, 91, 84, 90, all very, very high websites ranking for this. So even though the keyword difficulty is three, which indicates very easy, it's not when we go look at this. So that's kind of an example of the mismatch between the two. And to show you another example, Barrel Sauna has a keyword difficulty of 12, so four times as much as Portable Sauna. But if we go to the Barrel Sauna search and results page, we can see, look at that. Look at how many low domain rating websites rank. 16, 29, 28, 17, 39, 36, 31. All sorts of low domain rating websites. So this would be a much, much easier keyword for us to rank for, far easier. So this, that's, and this one has a higher keyword difficulty than the other one, but this would be much easier in practice to rank for. So that's kind of what we want to look at. That's an example of um, why it's not a good idea to just look at this. It's good to actually look at the results page and see what types of websites are ranking right now. So for our example, um, so that's kind of how to determine if a keyword is easy to rank for. What is the attentive keyword? So there's going to be two types of keywords. There's going to be informational and transactional. So transactional keyword is when someone's trying to buy something. So usually these are descriptive. So 32 inches, like size, describing the size of a, a product, like two person sauna or 32 inch grill or blue mobility scooter. Um, these are all buying into keywords, like someone's searching for a specific product. Um, informational keywords are people want information. So essentially at a high level, we want to use these keywords for our collection and category pages on our store or product pages. We want to use these keywords on our blogs. And another way that you can actually indirectly check this is if we go to the term sauna benefits. This is an information keyword if I had to guess, like someone's looking for information. What are the benefits of the sauna? And if you go to the SERP page, we can see, I'm imagining there's going to be all blogs ranking for this. So this looks like a blog. Pages, harvard.edu, articles, blog, blog, article. So it's not buying intent, but I bet you if I find something like two person sauna, it's going to be collection and category pages. And let's just find an example. Two person sauna. So Amazon, Wayfair's two person sauna. So this is actually an article, surprisingly. It looks like Costco, this is like a category page, category page, category page, no. Product, product, collections. So you get the idea. These are mainly transactional keywords is because the, the search results ranking are like um, where people can buy. So that's kind of the two keyword types. And just can, you can kind of ask yourself, like, is it? And it's not really important for this section, but we just want to be aware, like we want both of these on our website um, because they, they're very important in different places. Like this will be on our buying pages and this will be like for our blog to show expertise in the topic, which will indirectly help our collection pages and category pages rank. So that's how to qualify a keyword. And I'm just going to go through an example step by step. So in keyword research, we want to find all possible keywords related to a particular product type. On some stores, we kind of covered this, maybe one, in which case finding every keyword possible is important. On other stores, if you have multiple, it is important that we still focus on only one, two, or three and we are not going to get by posting two or three articles on like 50 different product types. It would be much better to focus on one or two product types and post 50 articles each for those. Um, in addition to keywords, we want to find all questions that people ask about the product, comparisons, um, etc. So we want to find keywords and put them in our list that show our product types, show buying intent, show specificity, um, questions, informational related queries. comparisons and you can kind of ignore keywords that have like other store names in them or like cheap clearance like these devaluing terms so what we want to do is we want to create our keyword list 
So I'm going to do an example for you <coughs> for a mobility scooter. So if I type in the term mobility scooter, you can see there's 25,000 keywords here. So what I want to do is export the list. And I would just do like 5,000 probably. And each of these keyword tools will have different lists, unfortunately. So what we want to do is we want to just take out the country and the difficulty column. We just want the keyword and the volume side by side. And we just want to highlight this entire list. It doesn't have to be 5,000. Like if you want to just start with 500 or 1,000, it's fine. But I would recommend starting with at least 500. So once we have the keyword in the volume, we want to plug that into our Ahrefs. So that's the keyword tool we used. So plug that in there. Now we want to do the same thing on another one. So I did SEMrush. So just do 5,000 again and plug them into our master list here. Now, lastly, we want to go to Answer the Public, which is essentially a website that if you type in a term, make sure you always have English in the US too. Well, actually, wherever you're selling. If you're selling in Australia, you put Australia here. But um, it will tell you all the questions asked about a particular product type, which is pretty cool. So then once you have it, it has the questions, and you can just export them. It doesn't matter. I don't think this one has actually the volume, which is fine. Just put. Um, Where's the keyword? So I guess it's under suggestion. So just take all of them. And then just put them in our answer the public column. Like this. And we'll have all three of these done. And then what we can then do is we want to transfer these each over to our master list. Okay, so those are done. And now we want to go to our SEMrush ones. And we can just plug them in at the bottom. So add a thousand. Now lastly, our answer the public ones. And again, it doesn't matter if there's no volume for those. Cool. So then this is your master keyword list, which we're going to use in section two, which is going to be keyword mapping. But this is all you need to do for this step. One thing I would recommend you do is I want you to go through and I want you to find buying intent keywords. So like ones that are descriptive of a product type or something like that with high volume. So anything over 200. So you won't need to go through a ton, maybe a couple pages worth. And we just want to look on the search and results page. Actually, anything over 100. We can see here, like the number one ranking site for this is has a domain rating of one. So this is an extremely easy keyword term to rank for. Sorry, I just need to sneeze. <coughs> Bless me. Um, so then you uh, you can just highlight it on your sheet. as like one that has high potential for a category page. Cause that's the ones that's going to be most important when we start our content is the category pages that have low difficulty and uh, high search volume. So mobility scooter, like rental, like that's not interesting to us because it's not buying intent. They want to rent, like it literally says rent in the name. Four wheel mobility scooter. So 33, it's not great, but I would still mark it down. Just go through all of them that have, um, all of them that have 
volume over like 50 to 100 and just mark them just go highlight the ones that have um, at least something below like 50 on the search page so 600 11 difficulty very very low so then we would highlight that covered mobility scooter and so on just go through all the ones that have like over a hundred volume and just highlight the ones that have high buying high buying intent like descriptive and have low domain earning sites ranking on the first page because these will be our main collection pages that we build out for that product with content. But again, um, I hope you found that video helpful. That's it for the keyword research section of the masterclass. If you have any questions, uh, comment them, but I will see you in the next video when that comes out. So thank you very much for watching. Again, if you could please subscribe to my channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Please hit the like button below if you took any value from this video at all. Uh, share it with a friend if you think they could find it useful, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching.